Our car tester, Sasha, is looking at the Mercedes C-Class today, under the beating Portuguese heat. He's seeing how the C63S AMG fares on the racetrack. The new C63S model is sporty and dynamic, like all cars made by Mercedes' high-performance AMG division. Its speed and handling make it perfect for a day at the track. Three hundred seventy five kilowatts of power mean the C sixty three S can hit one hundred kilometers per hour in just four seconds. It comes at a price of just over eighty four thousand euros in Germany. Race driver Bernd Schneider says it's a car for all occasions. It's a car that you can drive on normal streets for day to day use, he says, but one that also feels at home on a racetrack. Bernd also likes how drivers can program the car with their own individual setup to suit their needs. They can even have different setups for different racetracks. Whether drivers want comfort or need to handle wet conditions, they can choose their setup, and that makes this car stand out. The car's design is typically sporty for an AMG. The front of the car is marked with two power domes, and all the way to the back, the car's form shows it's all about speed and strength. Everything about the C63S shows that this car is not to be messed with. Sasha can't believe how quickly the C63 takes corners here on the racetrack. But it's not a cheap car. The basic model costs 76,000 euros and a few thousand on top of that for the S version and drivers have to consider whether it's worth taking it out on the racetrack with the risk of not seeing a corner properly and then taking it too fast. But Sasha wants to check the car out on regular roads as well. The standard C63 model is no less brutal than the S version. Both have impressive handling, and both are fun to drive. That's thanks to the AMG Ride Control Handling System, with electronically regulated shock absorbers and a rear axle limited slip differential. The car's interior is just as sporty as the outside. From the three-spoke steering wheel with large paddles for manual shifts, to the finish of the surfaces. And there's a full program of comfort and security systems available to the driver. The C63 AMG is powered by a four liter V8 by turbo engine. That gives it some serious beef under the hood. It consumes about 8.2 liters of gas over 100 kilometers on average. All in all, the car isn't cheap at over 75,000 euros, but for that, you get a car that will get you to your destination quickly and safely. Sasha says even the standard model is fun to drive out on the street with 350 kilowatts of power. The S version packs more of a punch, but it also costs more. And because he had so much fun earlier, Sasha's heading back to the racetrack. Kostet aber auch circa 8000 Euro mehr. Und da meine Zeiten auf der Rennstrecke noch nicht so richtig gut waren, gehe ich jetzt noch ein bisschen üben. The Volkswagen Tiguan has been around the block a few times now. The compact SUV has been around since 2007. Its name, a combination of the German words for tiger and iguana, was chosen back then by the readers of a car magazine.
The Tiguan has always cut a dynamic figure, but it's changed over time. Since 2011, it has featured angled headlights. It's practical too. Plastic cladding protects the bodywork from mud for driving over muddy terrain. Back to that name, what does it really mean? Artester Reinhold explains it's a cross between a tiger and an iguana. The tiger, of course, being the deadly predator native to Asia, and the iguana the camouflage specialist of North and South America. In Germany, though, the Tiguan is the king of the compact SUVs. It's competing with the Toyota RAV4, the Kia Sportage, and the Ford Kuga. The most remarkable feature of the Tiguan is that it's inconspicuous. Maybe that's why Germans love it. The 125 kilowatt engine is also great for off-road driving. The 2-liter turbo diesel engine produces 320 newton meters of torque through 1,750 revolutions per minute. The all-wheel drive system delivers plenty of power, split between the two axles by a Haldex clutch. All of that means the car is secure as can be out on the road. But it also consumes more gas than the front-wheel drive version, and the model we're testing has a top speed of about 190 kilometers per hour. Reinhold says although the Tiguan can go off-road, it's also great on the street. That's no surprise given its similarities to two other VW models, the Passat and the Golf. And anyone who's ever ridden in a Volkswagen before will feel at home in this car. It stands out from the competition with its adaptive chassis, which allows drivers to go for a ride that focuses on speed or comfort, with the comfort setting giving passengers a particularly smooth experience. Adding to that experience are these special seats, which come as standard. There's plenty of space in the back, too. Practicality comes to the fore here as well. There's a fold-out table, and the seats can be put away to make more storage room. Whether on the streets or off-road, the Tiguan is an all-rounder that suits all conditions. Reinhold can see why the Tiguan leads the market for compact SUVs. It doesn't have any weaknesses and meets Volkswagen's high standards for quality and performance. But at 25,000 euros, it doesn't come cheap. The all-wheel drive four motion model is more expensive at 29,000 euros. More varieties are due to be released soon, as well as a larger seven-seater and a coupe version to compete with BMW's X-Series. The American SUV market is especially important for Volkswagen. None of their models feature in the top 20 most popular cars in that class. The new additions will freshen the series up, but the Tiguan already has everything it needs to justify its place at the top of the compact SUV market. Aside from its drivability features, it also boasts great safety standards. It was awarded five stars by the car safety program Euro NCAP. Peugeot will release a new edition of its 208 Super Mini in June. Alongside the new improved PureTech and blue HDI engines, the French company will give customers the chance to personalize their cars, both inside and out. The new 208 will be available in 13 different colors, including the eye-catching orange power and the more understated matte finishes, ice gray and ice silver.
The Mazda MX-5 has represented freedom and driving pleasure to car owners for more than a quarter of a century. And now the Japanese company is presenting the fourth generation of its two-seater Roadster. The bonnet is flatter, while the windscreen frame has been slimmed down and shifted back. And it's up to 100 kilograms lighter than its predecessor. Specially coordinated Skyactiv G Direct Petrol injection engines power the car and continue 25 years of driving tradition. Some sounds are so wonderful that you just can't get enough of them. Like the roar of the BMW X6M's eight-cylinder high-performance engine. BMW's Constant Prix says that after the success of the first generation, of which they sold almost 20,000 units in five years, it was time to bring out a second, even better generation. Under the hood, you'll find the latest generation M twin powered turbo engines with 4.4 liters of cubic capacity and eight cylinders. It boasts 575 horsepower, 20 more than the previous generation, and 750 newton meters of torque. That's 70 more than before. The car flies from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in just 4.2 seconds, a full half second less than its predecessor. Pre says that's true sports car level. That's impressive, considering that this car is 4.9 meters long and has a hefty curb weight of 2.27 tons. BMW says average fuel consumption is 11.1 .1 liters per 100 kilometers. So it's a bit of a gas guzzler. But then the X6M doesn't aim to be an eco-friendly model. It's a car that combines extremes and pushes boundaries. Carsten Pries says they've made lots of modifications to the chassis and drivetrain to make the car more agile, precise, and ridded of some characteristics typical of sports activity vehicles. So the vehicle doesn't understeer. Its performance is very neutral. He believes the X6M unites all the precision and predictability you'd expect from an M model. Like its breathtaking sound, the other sporty details suit the X6M well. In particular, its coupe-like silhouette transforms it into a premium sports activity vehicle, or SAV. Side gills with air breathers reduce turbulence in the front wheel arches. At the back, a rear spoiler helps lessen aerodynamic lift and drag. From behind, the new X6M also looks more dynamic and pleasing than the standard version. Carson says that with the new X6M, BMW once again aims to appeal to performance-oriented people. With a car of this class, they can express that more than they might ordinarily. He feels that this makes a very strong statement about people, their performance orientation, and their taste in design. Inside, everywhere you look, the X6M is a little more luxurious, a little sportier, a little more extravagant. To achieve optimal acceleration from a standing start, the driver activates the launch control function, which has been adapted from race cars. Drivers depress the brake pedal while stomping on the gas until they reach the ideal starting RPMs. Once the driver takes his foot off the brake, the car shoots forward as fast as possible. Carson Pree says the new BMW X6M will be sold worldwide, but they expect the main markets to be the U.S., China, Russia, the Middle East, Canada, and Germany. 
Its sound, looks, and performance are out of this world. But hearing that the X6M's starting price is almost 118,000 euros in Germany is enough to bring most buyers back to earth fast. The Nissan Micra, also badged as the March, has been a popular choice for buyers around the globe for over three decades. To date, some six million have been sold, making the Super Mini one of Nissan's top three car models. So the Renault subsidiary is pinning its hopes on the new Micra to help it stay in the black. A car tester Tanju Genj says the Micra used to be a real woman's car, cute and cuddly. Now, in its fourth generation, it yearns to be a global car and please people from Thailand to Mexico. Tanju feels that in doing so, it sacrificed some of its charm. But with its curves, this little runabout is still an eye-catcher and popular with the ladies. Unlike their predecessors, fourth-generation Micras are all four-door models and therefore more practical. Tanju says the Micra's engine range has shrunk. No diesels are on offer, but there's a 1.2-liter three-cylinder gasoline-powered model, which comes in 59-kilowatt and 72-kilowatt versions. He's testing the 72-kilowatt one. A supercharger helps the little engine generate the additional 13 kilowatts of output. But does greater power also mean greater fuel consumption? Not here. The more powerful engine actually uses 0.7 liters less gas per 100 kilometers. So it's too bad that it's only available with more deluxe trim levels like the Ascenta, which costs upwards of 15,870 euros in Germany. Tanju says the Nissan Micra isn't a huge car, so it's a bit cramped in the back, but he notes that in a Super Mini, you can't expect much space. The equipment in the Micra's interior is pretty basic. After the dashboard display greets the driver, it helps him or her save gas by displaying the current fuel mileage. Optional extras include a sat-nav for 750 euros and automatic climate control for 400 euros. The seats are slightly hard and don't offer any lateral support, but the trunk boasts enough cargo volume to meet the average person's daily needs. Our tester says the base model Micra with the Vizia first trim level, which costs around 11,500 euros in Germany, is basically fine. But to get an audio system and a manually operated climate control unit, you'll have to cough up 1,500 euros more. He thinks that's a lot, as the same package in the Smart 44 costs 1,100 euros, and the climate control is automatic. But otherwise, the Nissan Micra has everything a Super Mini should. Thanks to its lightweight construction, it's thrifty and agile. It offers good visibility, yet is small enough to make its way through the narrowest of alleys. So it's likely that, in future, the number of Micra buyers will surpass the 6 million mark. But the VW Polo and Opel Corsa still outdo the Nissan Micra for workmanship. The 911 Turbo made its debut at the Paris Motor Show in 1974. It started out with a 260 horsepower engine, but in 1977, the car got a power boost. Thanks to its new intercooling system, the 3.3 liter motor could generate 300 horsepower. Christoph says the 911 Turbo is more than just a car. It's the stuff of legend. In the 1970s and 80s, there was no getting away from it. Whether you were a yuppie or a technical freak, a grandma or a kid, this car polarized people, Christoph adds. They either loved it or hated it, coveted it or vilified it, but it certainly didn't leave them cold. As the world's first turbocharged series production supercar, the Porsche 911 Turbo combined power with luxury. 
Originally designed as a race car, some last-minute changes to the regulations robbed it of its chances on the track. But not to be daunted, Porsche switched gears and turned the vehicle into a luxury sports car, though it retained one race car characteristic. It's turbo lag. Christoph says rally driver Walter Rora once described it this way. You step on the gas and for a few seconds nothing happens. Then suddenly it feels like you've been rear-ended. Christoph says that's true and provides a demonstration. <laughs> this baby really flies, he says. It's enough to strike fear into the hearts of the Italians at Lamborghini and Ferrari. When it made its debut, the 911 Turbo cost close to 66,000 Deutschmarks, 20,000 more than the priciest 911 Carrera. Still, thanks to its stunning looks and superior performance, by 1989, over 21,000 of the original Turbo models had been sold. 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 5.5 seconds and a top speed of 260 kilometers an hour. That's what Christoph calls performance. But he warns inexperienced drivers to beware. If they hit the gas at the wrong moment and then the turbocharger kicks in, the rear end could spin out of curves. Even Porsche knew the 911 Turbo was hard to handle. It's a real sports car and requires concentration to drive, this commercial states. But it rewards you with a high level of safety and driving pleasure. Those who equate driving pleasure with great acceleration and power will find few cars to match the original 911 Turbo, even today. What a beast, Christoph says, noting that the 911 Turbo's trademark rear spoilers are hard to overlook. When the car was introduced, many owners of regular 911s had these whale tails added to their vehicles. Christoph says this didn't escape the attention of the designers at Porsche, and they eventually offered this turbo look for regular 911s, complete with tail fin, fender extensions, and fatter Fuchs wheels. Christoph finds that all a bit embarrassing, though. The design of the 911 Turbo turned out to be a hit, though it was born of necessity. The wing extensions are from the Carrera 3.0 RS with slight modifications. And a Porsche designer gave the body a final going over outside of regular work hours. Due to the firm's limited budget, his reward was a bottle of whiskey. The interior incorporated all of the optional extras Porsche had to offer. However, the huge intercooler for the 3.3-liter engine only arrived at the end of 1977. The original 911 Turbo wasn't lacking for anything, Christoph says, but the 3.3-liter model came with even more extras. Power windows, power seats, power sunroof. But such luxury didn't come cheap. In 1974, the turbo cost over 65,000 euros, a third more than the most powerful naturally aspirated Porsche of the day, the Carrera 2.7. Even though it's incredibly powerful, Christoph says the turbo is more of a gran turismo than race car, and that sports cars enthusiasts prefer naturally aspirated Porsches. That's because the turbo only gets to flex its impressive muscle on straightaways. Every naturally aspirated 911 delivers more precise and smooth handling when taking curves. Still, the turbo helped Porsche attract a new type of customer. Christoph says the 911 turbo was the first and most successful turbocharged supercar. Its arrival put Porsche on a par with Italian supercar makers like Lamborghini and Ferrari. Compared to other supercars, Christoph believes the turbo strikes the right balance between sportiness and practicality between the racetrack and the supermarket. For that reason, he feels the 911 Turbo is truly a milestone in automotive history. And a legendary car model to boot. Little wonder, as three decades after it was introduced, the turbocharged 911 still packs a real punch. We'll